And if anything, I bet more golfers will push or fade that club than any of the others that we're building here. So we put the lightest shaft and hopefully the most flexible in the four iron. We'll proceed with the next lightest in the batch for the five iron, the next lightest for the six iron, and so forth. At the end, we have our heaviest and perhaps our stiffest shaft. After all, it is a sand wedge, and we have plenty of loft to get the ball airborne. Plus, if there's any one club you want to have the least amount of dispersion, it's going to be the wedge. Next to the weight on the, the butt end, I would suggest also writing down which iron the shaft will go into. This will be handy when you go to tip trim the shafts and then go to epoxy them into the individual club. Just make sure that when you do put the weight of the, the club or the club number with the Sharpie pen um, at the end of the shaft, or don't put it at the very, very end of the shaft because you might actually cut it off when you're butt trimming. Just place it far enough down the uh, butt end of the shaft so that the grip will cover it up. And that's it. You're done. I bet that added maybe five minutes tops to your assembly process and fewer if you had a digital scale. I know that many of you here are attending today may have limited resources, and a gram weight scale might be all you have. But don't go anywhere just yet, because I want to reinforce this concept about weight sorting and introduce you to a new procedure. We're going to talk about frequency. Frequency is a dynamic way of measuring the stiffness of a shaft by putting the shaft or a club in a special device called a frequency analyzer, not a frequency matching machine. It has a clamp to secure the shaft or the club and a counter to read the number of oscillations or cycles per uh, minute, or that's CPM for short. These can only be found at a component supplier, and they can be rather expensive. But for those who use a frequency analyzer in their shop, we'll find them indispensable for their everyday operation. To sort shafts, and uh, I wouldn't use a head here, rather some sort of weighted object that can easily be inserted onto the shaft, tightened, and also removed quickly. At Harico, we sell a, uh, a tip weight with a thumb screw to tighten on the shaft. Actually, we carry two of them. Um, long before those were available, I've been using the same 3 8 inch um, drill chuck for the past 20 years. All of my assembly notes or all my uh, shaft testing notes are based on that exact same chuck. Uh, and that tells me what the, uh, the raw frequency of the shaft was for my records. And for you guys out there, make sure to take notes on the raw frequency. So if you have to repair a club, you can start out with a, a shaft um, with as close to the raw or same raw uh, frequency as possible. So what I do is I just slide my chuck or my tip weight onto the shaft, I shove it into the clamp on the frequency analyzer until it reaches my stop. There's usually a stop for the, the shaft butt to rest against. And I uh, clamp the, the shaft securely. And then what I do is just pluck the shaft to start it going in motion, hit the reset button on the analyzer, and instantly I get a number like 315, which tells me that the, what the relative stiffness of the shaft is, or at least the shaft will oscillate 315 times in one minute. This won't, um, this most, uh, this won't likely be the, uh, the finished frequency of the golf club because I've yet to tip trim or butt trim the shaft. And the next thing I do is I write down the number on the butt end of my shaft with the Sharpie pen and start the whole process over with each and every shaft in the lot. Okay, when I'm done, then I can begin to start to uh, put the shafts in a logical sequence. Again, we're only going to be using 8 of the 10 shafts here. So I can be selective in what shafts I want to use. I want to start out by putting the lowest frequency shaft in the 4-iron. And we'll proceed with the next lowest in the batch for the 5-iron, next lowest for the 6-iron, and so forth. At the end, we're going to have our stiffest shaft, which will be put in the wedge. Remember to write down which iron the shaft will go into with your Sharpie pen. Again, this takes very little time. But sorting is important, and I'm going to show you why. In our case, the lightest weight shaft 
wasn't the most flexible and the heaviest wasn't the stiffest. But it is a good indicator, and that's why weight sorting steel shafts is better than doing nothing at all. And if you do both weight and frequency uh, sorting, which is entirely up to you, you can also subsort. I want you to look at the two entries on this slide that have the raw frequency of 321. It'll be in blue. Here, let me move my uh, little hand here. It's these two shafts here. Um, okay. Now the stiffness, the raw uh, frequency, or the stiffness is the same on both of these two shafts, but they weigh slightly different. I would suggest using the lighter of the two shafts in the longer club. In this case, it would be the six iron. Now look at the two entries that had the raw frequency of 323 below it. Okay. Again, those had the same stiffnesses, but the weights are quite a bit different in this case. I'd suggest using the lighter of the two in the longer club. Again, in this case, it'd be the uh, nine iron, according to our uh, slide. With unitized, or, or commonly called parallel tip steel shafts, you'll be progressively removing material from the shaft. The shorter the club, the lighter the shaft's going to become. This is why I think that uh, subsorting is a great way of using the slight tolerances to your advantage. And lastly, when we look at this slide, look at the one entry that has a raw frequency of, of 324. It's the one here in red. Okay. This is always a decision that you're going to have to make on which is more important, weight or frequency. The shafts that we have for the pitching wedge and the sand wedge could easily be interchanged, uh, which is what I may have done if this were my set I was making for myself, because the sand wedge is already going to be heavy. Um, that one CPM difference is going to be the equivalent of about one-tenth of a flex. So not a whole lot considering what the weight differential is. So you can use your own judgment here, but that's, that's, how to, that's the process or the, the logical sequence of how you want to sort these uh, different shafts. Okay. With the vast majority of parallel tip shafts, uh, you'll be tip trimming in half-inch increments, uh, increments, which is our next step. If you take a look at shafts when you're done, the tip to the first step dimension will uh, graduate in nice, even half-inch increments. And when you go to assemble the clubs, the dif uh, distance from the top of the ferrule to the first step will proceed in nice, even increments as well. Now, there's a group of, of those out there which I'm going to call nibblers. And what I mean by that is if the raw frequencies are inconsistent, like in our example, the club makers will deviate from the normal tip trimming so that all the shafts will come out perfect. That is, the shaft that's on the low side of the frequency range would be tip trimmed more than it should be, and the stiffest shaft would be tip trimmed uh, less. So the distance from the top of the ferrule to the first step will no, be, or will no longer